So Eureka came out with a, uh, a version of their Mignon grinder called the Libra that automatically weighs out um, the coffee as it's grinding. And I looked at that and I said, well, heck, I think I can do that. And so in this video, I'll show you how I did do that. So the first thing we need is a load cell. So I ripped apart a cheap Amazon scale and grabbed the load cell out of that. Now I thought I was gonna be able to just hook right into the circuitry, but it turns out that they epoxied over the IC and it was too much of a hassle. So I went and I got an HX711 load cell ADC from SparkFun and that was the main thing that I started out testing with this circuit. I also knew that I wanted a display, so this is just a little OLED 128 by 64 pixel display. Uh, the main workhorse here is going to be an ESP32 from Seed Studio called the Zhao. And this thing is ridiculous. It's tiny, it's like 160 megahertz, it has like 4 megabytes of RAM, it is a beast. It comes with onboard Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USB-C, and even has built-in battery management systems. Now just because people will wonder, here's going to be the pinout that I'm going to be using. Um, you do have a limited number of pins here. I use the regular uh, I2C connections, uh, D4 and D5 for the display, but I found that to really do serial communications, you have to stick to the serial pins. And so the HX711 uh, ends up talking to D10 and D8. The motor control comes out of D1, and that actually I'm going to be putting through a transistor because, uh, as it turns out, the Eureka Mignon is a 5-volt low-voltage system, and uh, the ESP32 is not 5-volt tolerant. And so here's the pinout for the transistor that I'm going to be using, which is just a 2N3904. And by the way, did I mention that the little Zhao is absolutely tiny? Don't worry if you're uh, in metric land. Here you go. Another coin for you. Uh, these things are ridiculously tiny. And this is going to really just make this whole thing uh, work for us. It also comes with its own little antenna because, again, it does have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. So I started off making a pin header for the load cell where I immediately found out that my wire strippers didn't go small enough. I tried some bad ideas and then I figured out that it's literally as easy as just using my fingernails to pull the insulation off the wiring. Um, once I finally got that figured out, I was able to finish making uh, the connection cable for this thing. And now I had my load cell all wired up and ready to go. Next up was a Fairly poor soldering job on the ESP32, and I didn't really keep that one in focus, but anyway, we got pin headers on everything, and now everything is ready to go. So now the arduous process of breadboarding and starting to learn how everything works, because I've, well, never programmed an Arduino really before, um, and so I figured out how to run a display, how to get the load cell working, and let me tell you, I was tickled when I finally saw numbers updating on that screen uh, in real time. Now one of the things is that, you know, scales usually update very slowly, but the HX711 can be updated 80 times a second by making a simple adjustment, which is either cutting this jumper right there in the middle where it says rate on the SparkFun board, or on these other boards, soldering these two legs together on the little IC chip. That will make them update much, much faster than the 10 times a second that they usually do. Once I got everything on the microcontroller side done, it was off to build an app. And I've never built an app before, so I used MIT App Inventor um, to make an Android app. So once I got that connected again, I was thrilled because it turns out that um, I didn't know a lot of things. And it took a lot of, you know, focused cursing and banging my head against the wall to finally get this thing to work correctly. And once it did, once again, I was thrilled to death. Uh, when I was finally able to get the mass updating on the screen uh, live in real time. Again, just proud as I could be of this thing. Now, at that point, I had to program it to turn things on and off. This took another couple of days of figuring out all the protocols to get the Bluetooth communication to actually send data correctly. Um, but eventually, I was able to do that, and then I got to tear into the Eureka to figure out how to control that thing. The main thing that you're looking for is a relay, and right there it is. Um, that big chunk of plastic right there is what shuts the motor on and off. And I included a couple of glory shots here just in case anybody really uh, needs to see what the control boards for this thing look like. 
So um, as I was plugging around in there, I was like, okay, I gotta probe all these pins and then staring right at me was a jumper header. As it turns out, I don't have to do anything. Um, it's already there. As it turns out, Eureka has already provided connections to do pretty much this very thing. Uh, you've got red is the five volt, white is the ground, and yellow is where the signal goes in to control the relay. So at that point, I soldered in another pin header, made up another jumper, and I had everything wired up and ready to test. Let's see if I can actually control this thing. Um, so my first test, here we go. I drilled a hole in the bottom of the grinder so that I could get the control wiring out. I also needed to get this thing off the breadboard, so I made up a little PCB where I immediately figured out that these pin headers were too small. So I found a 16 pin header, cut that thing up so that it would fit the Zhao, and I got everything loaded into my little board. And ain't she pretty. I then spent way too much time 3D printing and testing various uh, enclosures, which I was never satisfied with, so I will not be uploading those STLs because they're trash. And I was now able to get to doing some real testing, um, where I hooked everything up and let's see if it actually works. Well, that's not too bad. Um, I was getting a bit of overthrows here and there, and so I updated the code with that little trickle feature to see if I could stave that off. It still needs calibration and tweaking, but it's doing pretty darn good. I'm consistently getting uh, within a tenth of a gram of my desired weight with very little problem. The scale itself fires up quickly. It's fairly accurate and it's much faster than most weigh scales that you get unless you get, you know, espresso specific or coffee specific scales. Calibration is pretty important and I've found that my particular load cell seems to be uh, pretty sensitive with respects to where you actually put the weight. If you move the weight around, the reading does change. So I'm not sure if I just don't have it mounted quite securely enough or what, but that's probably throwing things off a little bit. But overall, I can't say that I'm too unhappy because given that this was my first shot, it's turned out pretty darn good. So that's all I've got for this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, this was entertaining for you. Um, if you've got any uh, feedback or have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can.